you've got a big important resin print coming up and you just don't like automatic supports. Whether they're overzealous, they make it impossible to remove, or quite frankly, they're costing you too much dang money. If you've run into any of those problems, you found the right video. Let's talk about doing your own resin 3D printing supports by hand. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the 3D Musketeers YouTube channel. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like and get subscribed. We are in the first couple of weeks of the month of resin. That's right, February is our month of resin. We're going to be talking all about resin topics. And one of them that is near and dear to me is supports. And I believe you all kind of feel the same way that I do. Automatic supports are a pain in the ass. When we look at these two prints, these are the exact same parts. They are in the exact same orientation. Heck, they are even the exact same distance away from each other. This bank of seven and this bank of seven are identical, except this is automatic supports and these are mine. Which one would you want to print? Now, when I say that these are my supports, it is a bit of a misnomer. I learned about this from a good buddy of the channel, Mr. Idlehams Charo Zuck, who does all of the supporting for Fotis Mint. If you know Fotis, you know some of his amazing pieces, like the Boba Fett bust, and others that a lot of them are now coming pre-supported with beautiful support settings, all built right into the file. It's the thought process here that matters the most. We want to look at where is this going to give us problems and how can we support it most effectively with using the minimal amount of material. And yes, both of these prints will actually print. But this, this is in the future. Let's rewind to when I first started on these parts. Let's show you guys what it takes to do this. What you are looking at are some custom sim racing parts that we worked on for a client. We are looking at orienting them so that they have the smallest amount of cross-sectional area on the build plate, but are also taking into account the critical services, making them look as pretty as possible. I didn't realize at the time, but the two pieces on the left and right are mirrors of each other. Should have measured that because it would have made this entire support system a lot easier. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to search for detailed islands. Now we could go to real since we are using Lychee Slicer Pro, but I did not want to do that because that is only available in the paid version. So this is things that are all possible inside of the free version of Lychee. We instantly went and added support to all of those islands that lets us know where immediately Lychee Slicer says we need things. And then we're going ahead and adding in bit support at the top of every one of these holes. You don't technically need it, but we find that it helps to keep the concentricity or the circularness of the circle. So now that we found what we're working on, we're going to do these mini supports and they're done by holding control and alt and they look a little bit odd. They are, and technically these are wrong. You'll see later in the video that our tip diameter is 0.2 here when it really should have been 0.4. But what you do is once you have it, you then use alt and shift. You can actually see it at the bottom middle of the screen. You use alt shift to copy this and you can see I'm using the checkerboard pattern as a basic patterning system so that as we're building these out, we know that they're roughly the same distance away from each other. And we're going to be doing this over and over again because ultimately we don't need a ton of support material. I'm looking to see where we're going to have the highest stresses. I'm making sure to grab that edge. And because these have a very small contact point, they are considerably less likely to cause damage to the part itself. This is why auto supports suck. They use these big tip diameters, they use tons of them, and it is such a pain to get everything off of your model. This method, as you can see, is definitely not this fast, does take some time. We'll put the time on the screen for how long this actually took. But once you really get moving, it could be something that comes second nature, and this will make removing support so much easier. 
make sure you guys get subscribed and stay to the end of the video because we are talking about how much we actually saved in material. It is absolutely crazy. And speaking of absolutely crazy, reminds me of today's sponsor, 3D Musketeers. We at 3D Musketeers are experts at 3D printing. It's why we can do awesome videos like this. And while we are not impervious to our own mistakes, that kind of thing happens. It is not a problem that you have to deal with. You pay one price, you get awesome 3D prints delivered right to your door anywhere in the globe. We are here to help make those ideas real. Whether you are an attorney looking into 3D printing for some reason, or you are an inventor that is looking to take your idea and get it on the store freaking shelves, we are here to help you from art to part. The experts at 3D Musketeers have over 20 years of experience under their belts and are able to help walk you through the troublesome world of 3D printing and product development. If you are one of those people or you just want to support the channel, you can reach out to us down below at 3D Musketeers. You can support us directly at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers or we have channel memberships available as well so you can support us there too. Anyways, I appreciate your support so let's get back to supports. Went to check it and unfortunately, dang. Time to add more support. Try it again. Ah, sometimes resin fails really suck, and I think I know why. I was really trying to do the bare minimum support possible for the video, and. I, I think I kind of let it get the best of me, to be honest. These smaller supports are great, and they're very, very useful and valid in many scenarios. But we were also running a tip diameter of 0.2 previously. Now we're up to 0.4, which means we're going to get a larger penetration into the model. More penetration, more better. Never mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going through, just going to add some more supports onto these models. One other thing to note, these five are identical, so I'm just going to support one of them. I'll delete the others, and I'm just going to copy the one that we have five times. And yes, this is a lot more support than we had previously, but I do believe it's necessary. I, after seeing the way that print came out, I'd like to have a few more just around the model. And for these ones, Really, the bulk of it is at the bottom. If the bottom really sticks and sticks well to the support material, and of course the support material sticks well to your build plate, this one should be okay. We're really just adding these supports to make sure the tops of the circles print well. Okay, I think this is a little bit better. It's definitely quite a bit safer. We're going to make sure that we have parents, because every now and then you do need an adult. Add some bracings. We will check for islands one more time, but we should be fine. We have one. Okay, so we do have one valid island that it says, hey, not happy with you. No problem. Toss a support to your Witcher and you'll be just fine. Now, because we did add more to that part, make sure we can add a couple little braces in there. Well, here's hoping it goes well. I won't know for a few more hours, but you guys will get uh, footage if it does fail. I'm gonna get over to the printing, gonna toss my gloves on, toss some glasses on, throw the lab coat on, add plus five to intellect, and get this thing put on there. But I can tell you just from looking at what we see on the screen now, this appears to be a much stronger print. We increased the diameter overall, and stay tuned, because next video, we're gonna have some fun in UV tools. We're gonna talk all about it next week. So yeah, let's see what happens. Try the second. And it looks 
so much better. Who knew adding a little bit of thickness to things would actually make it work better? I, I feel like I did, but I didn't listen to myself. Considering that this print right here is printed with those old settings, and yet these new ones did not work. It might have something to do with their cross-sectional area, but I'm relatively confident considering all even the little bits of support printed perfectly. I think we're pretty good for this. We're gonna put it up there, let it drip dry, then we're gonna go ahead and get it cleaned off. Not gonna touch it with these hands, don't worry, because resin is toxic. We're gonna get this done. Now the reason that these need to be cleaned like this is because we actually did a bit of a cure for removing the supports. This was done purely for the video. We don't normally do this, but I didn't want to have to wear these big chem gloves. It makes this kind of work really tough on camera, especially when you're working on top of a camera. So normally we'd recommend that you don't do a post cure before you remove your supports because it does make removing the supports considerably more difficult. Parts are out of curing, which means it's now time for cleaning. Again, because we went through and actually cured these a little bit before filming just to make it easier to handle on camera, it means I'm stuck with a little bit more sanding than I prefer. But this is our dedicated piece of sandpaper for resin. It's a piece of 600. We'll link to some in the description if you're curious. We make these in-house, these little sanding blocks. If you want to get some, let me know. Maybe we'll start producing them. We've just been making them for personal use. They're absolutely awesome for stuff like this. There you go. Parts are done other than just the general cleaning. They're absolutely perfect. I'm happy I screwed up with the post cure or the, I guess the pre cure before the support removal. Cause I think it would have gone a lot smoother otherwise. Um, let me go get a part and show you guys what it would look like. So we have a part here that was done with the same support settings. Now this part had some other issues with it. A lot of it were just based on the design itself, but I did not cure this for a minute like we did this one. Um, that was done for the video this thinking that if there's any excess resin I'll have it cured off I, I don't I don't know what's going through my head but anyways this is how it should look like literally the support just wiggles free this support settings really really change the game for resin printing this part it is clean I verified it was clean that's why I'm not using gloves but yeah that that's kind of the big thing here is making sure that you don't use too much support because this is this over here is not not a lot of waste all things considered because this is junk we do recommend you keep some of the bigger parts around if you ever have to do a tank clean cycle it makes removing the actual bit that gets stuck inside the tank considerably easier but when you're using less material you get more parts per liter and that's what we're all about here at 3d musketeers efficiency you saw me use some sanding sticks these are ones that we make on the laser which is scrap acrylic so uh, we can start selling them if people want we've made them with rounded edges wider ones full rounds and they can be easily customized and they're great for things like this where you need to really work in certain areas. Let me know down in those comments what you think of this. Are you gonna be switching over to this style where it is minimal support, but it's more than enough? And there you have it. We've got all the resin prints done here. And they came out pretty good. As we talked about there, uh, I kind of screwed this one up from a filming standpoint. Uh, I cured the supports thinking that it would make it easier for me to remove them on camera lo and behold i cured them way too long i wanted to make sure that any laden resin that was on it got cured unfortunately uh it did but it also cured all the support so it made it a real pain in the butt to get off but you could see that there's a lot less material use and you get the exact same outcome at the end of the day don't be a big dummy like me and cure your supports because that that was just that was just a rookie mistake and I realized it as soon as I turned on the curing light but at that point 
it was too late. The damage had been done. The parts came out really, really nice, especially these. These are really the, the problem ones because you've got eight holes in there that need to be as close to perfectly round as possible. And then we have the individual buttons and knobs themselves. And this is for a sim racer. We actually time-lapsed those yesterday, so you guys can take a look at that as well. This is a much better method, and I know that my showing of it was not the best, and that's more my fault. The first time we ran this print, it failed. Second time we ran the print, I ran out of time to film. So, bit of a bummer is what it is and uh i'm hoping that you guys enjoyed this one there's a lot of good information here because you can see there's a significant difference in this let me show you we're looking at 47 milliliters of resin used for the main parts done with auto supports in the exact same orientation that i used and we look at the custom supported which yes did take some time it's down to only 28 milliliters uh almost 50 percent saving on material which results in less effort in the long run as well because if you do screw up like i did this honestly would have been a complete reprint uh, there would probably have not have been saving all of this from what would happen because when you cure supports like that they have a tendency to weld when you break them off they might chip the part and take a part of that part with it we're going to explore this a little bit more we'll likely have a follow-up in a couple of months just to see how this works out we've only recently switched over to doing it this way and while there is a lot of time involved in this i believe with experience i can get quite a bit faster and get the eye for what's required to do it correctly learning from experts like idle hams charo zuck has really shown me the light if you will on the right way to do it and that auto supports while functional are generally quite overzealous in their algorithms and the way that they run but let me know down in those comments what you think of this i'd love to know if this is something you're going to try out and if you want to see more prints that utilize this technique anyways guys that's all i have for you today Stay safe out there, wear your PPE because resin is toxic. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. You just, you, you just want, you want, you want the chin scratches? Is that what you want? Nope. Okay. All right. We're good. We're cool, G. We're cool. We're cool, G. <laughs> just look at her. <laughs> We're good. Whoop, bless you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our patrons and YouTube channel members whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Right below me is the entire resin 3D printing series here on 3D Musketeers. If you want to learn more about resin 3D printing, that's a great place to start with videos for beginners. And we're working on getting videos for the more intermediate or expert variants out there. I would say this video itself is quite intermediate. And right next to it is going to be a random video picked by our editor because it's a lot of fun when I put him on the spot like that. I will see you guys down in those comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.